Hey, hi everyone. My name is Susan. I am part of the accommodation team. Today I am here with the, one of the, our student ambassadors. Hi, I'm Sri Janani. I'm a student ambassador for the Embedded Systems Master Program. So I'm doing my second year of Masters in Embedded Systems. Uh, today I'll be joining with Susanna for this webinar. Yes, and we are on different locations right now due to the ongoing pandemic. And um, uh, we hope this works out fine anyways. And we're looking forward to inform you about the student accommodation. So you can see a summary of the presentation here. We are expecting it to take about 40 minutes. And um, it is mainly for uh, the student groups who are guaranteed housing, that is tuition fee paying students and joint master students. And before we wrap up the presentation, we will go through some of the pre-submitted questions that haven't been answered through the presentation. And uh, we will open a chat as well, so that if you have any inquiries, then you can chat with us after the presentation. So write down any questions you got, but we hope to answer most of them through the presentation. So as you can see, KDH has uh, five five campuses in this picture you can see the five campuses in and around stockholm the main campus is located in central stockholm next to the royal national park and on the main campus you'll find the kdh library student union building and the kdh andre kdh andre is the main point of contact for keys your contract for housing everything can be collected on arrival from the kdh andre yes and also in this building you see it in the middle bottom part of the map. Uh, it, we're also, I mean, Kittish accommodation team is also available for pre-booked appointments. Um, so uh, it's good to know. And I would like to ask you, uh, Shri, where do you spend most of your time in class? Where, uh, which campuses do you have classes on? So uh, during my first year, I had classes in both KDH main campus as well as in the KDH Shishtag campus. And uh, usually I take the public transport uh, metro station that is closer to the main campus for commute. So it's easier and it is maximum 30 minutes. So yeah, that, that's how uh, my classes went about during the first year. Now all my classes are in the main campus. Okay, I see. Um, so I will introduce you to um, KDH Accommodation Office and how it works. Uh, it is an office that belongs to the University Administration of KTH, and it works with and is depending on state funding, and it is non-profit. The service emerged uh, because of the housing situation in Stockholm, making it uh, quite difficult sometimes to find something on your own. Uh, especially as an incoming international student. So the university saw a need to assist international students with finding a place to live. So KTH Accommodation office offers a service that is voluntary to the students of subleasing rooms and apartments from student housing companies and from building companies. Uh, so KTH have an ongoing contract with these companies and then KTH manages the rooms and apartments that we sublease to the students. So this means that there is a limited amount of rooms and apartments, and some student groups are guaranteed to get a housing offer and a contract uh, when they have complied with the application conditions. You can also see on the presentation in the photo, the KTH Entree building that we mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, so this is where accommodation is available for pre-booked appointments during opening hours, and is, this is where you collect your key and contract uh, on arrival. So some student groups, groups are guaranteed housing with KTH accommodation. And these are the uh, tuition fee paying students and joint master program students. Uh, some of the programs are listed here. And those student groups are guaranteed housing in their first year at KTH. The contracts are predetermined to an 11 month period from August to June. 
and the maximum uh, rental period is one academic year. And so in this section, we will go through the application process, um, receiving an offer and some information about rent and invoices. After that, we will move on to the little bit more fun parts, the housing locations, the types of rooms that are offered, and um, Shri will also give her um, give her give us some information about the student life at KTH and her uh, accommodation for the past two years that she has been in with KTH in Sweden. So the application is open in the month of May until May 31st from May 1st. It doesn't matter when in May you apply, there's no first come first serve rule. So please take your time and review the housing options and your preferences before you apply. And you can only apply once. So take your time and review the options first. And these are all available on our website. We will also give some examples today. And to be able to apply, you must have received your acceptance letter. That is a notification of selection results that you receive via university admissions. And you must also have paid the tuition fee. And if you're a joint master student, joint master program student, then you should have received the formal letter uh, of acceptance from KTH to, into your program. And you should also have paid your tuition if you're obliged to do so. If you haven't received your um, acceptance letter from KTH uh, as a joint master student, then please contact us if you haven't received it, that is by May 31st. So um, then please email us and we will solve it. The application is done through an online form and it is found on our webpage from May 1st. So you can go to new at KTH and then to accommodation and then find it there after May 1st. But you will also receive an email with uh, when the application form opens. And in the email, there will be a link to the web page with the form and instructions. So there's no need to send the acceptance letter to KTH accommodation. We have our own way to see who are accepted and who, who isn't, but that that step must be done before you apply, but you don't have to send any proof of it to us. Uh, we check it uh, separately. And it is not necessary to have your residence permit ready before you do your housing application. Mm, you do need to comply with the requirements for, for your application to be valid and considered. In the application, there is some space for stating preference for type of housing or type of room. However, it is not guaranteed that your accommodation offer will be what you wished for in the application. Um, and it's not possible to change, change housing afterwards. If you, choose to, if you choose a shared apartment as your preference, and you wish to stay in the same apartment as a friend, uh, then there is space for making such a wish in the application. You can put one name down only, and both of you needs to write down each other's names in respective application. So it's important that both of you put down uh, each other's names in order for us to be able to consider your wish. And it's not always possible to meet the wish of a flatmate, and some accommodations are more popular than others. Therefore, KTH cannot guarantee that everyone will receive their number one choice. Uh, this is, it might be a lot of information, but it is quite easy if you follow the instructions that are sent to you via email around May 1st. Shri, did you experience, experience any difficulties with the making the application uh, or how was it for you? Uh, so, as you had mentioned earlier, uh, if we follow the instructions, the process is pretty smooth. So, when you're, uh, before you submit your application, it is very important that you look at all the accommodations and arrange them uh, in accordance with your uh, preferences, like your price range and your uh, the location of the property and also whether you want to have a shared accommodation or not. So, based on these criteria, please 
uh, arrange your preferences. So up to three preferences are possible. So before you submit your application, make sure you have them ready so that it, it goes on smoothly. Yes, they're very good points. And I would also like to point out that um, you should make more than one preference in the application form or else you will be allocated a room by random. So if you if your first choice is not available, so please make more than one preference in the application form. Uh, let's move on to uh, some information about receiving the housing offer. So you make your application in May and then in June you will receive your housing offer with the attached contract via email. Uh, in the email you will also receive information about the first invoice and when it will be due. So read the full email carefully please. And uh, you don't need to respond to the email with the offer unless you wish to decline the offer. In that case decline in a reply as soon as possible so that someone else get the opportunity to get the housing offer. And if you decide that you don't want the housing offer through KTH accommodation and you decline it, uh, please also note that you cannot apply a second time. Um, so there's only one application per person. Um, Sheree, do you have any recommendations for when you receive mm -hmm. the offer? Yeah, so as soon as you receive the offer, please read through it carefully, understand the rental period and your obligations and rights as a tenant. So these are pretty important, so please be aware of them. And you will receive your offer during the month of June. Uh, I received mine on June 11 to be specific. And I was able to get my first choice of accommodation. So please be careful when you're giving your preferences so, so that if by chance you get your first accommodation, you should be happy with it. So make sure uh, you order your preferences in the way that you want, it, want them to be. Yeah, uh, so it's a pretty smooth process and everything will be taken care. So please make sure that you submit a proper application. Yes. Okay, so we did receive a, a few questions about rent and invoices in the pre-submitted questions and uh, we will try to address them here and then follow up with a few more in the end of the presentation. So rent for housing is separate from the tuition fee. It is not included. The first rent is not a deposit. It covers your first rent. So uh, this means that rent is paid monthly in advance and it's not possible to pay the full term in one payment, unfortunately. Uh, the easiest way to pay is via pay.kth.se and you will re be recommended to use this pay method in the email with your offer and the contract. The electricity, heat, water are all included in the rent. There's no extra bills for this. Uh, the internet is included in all ex uh, locations except for Technikringen but we do provide guidance on how to set yourself up when you arrive uh, with the internet. Um, did you uh, pay via, was it several several ways to pay when you were doing your first rent payment with KTH accommodation? So uh, the easiest way to pay the rent is using a credit card or a debit card, which has, an, which has the international transfer option enabled. So make sure that you have that uh, at hand so that your payment is processed easy, easily. So yeah, card is the best way to do this transfer. I understand. Okay, great. Okay, we have some important dates to remind you of, and then we will have a look into the housing areas offered. Um, the application uh, period is May 1st to May 31st. The booking period is in June and that is when, that is when we go through all the applications. Um, it is uh, all in order that the offers are sent out to the students on different dates. 
So some will receive their offer earlier than others, but please be patient. We are going through all the applications. And if you have submitted it, we have also received it. So uh, everyone who is uh, eligible will get their offer by July 1st. So before July 1st, you will receive an answer to your application. Um, yes, let's have a look at the housing areas. Uh, the accommodation, KPH accommodation sublease to the students are located in and around Stockholm. Uh, we are, or I am currently on the main campus, KTH main campus, and that is near the Malvinasvag and Teknikringen accommodation. Uh, I will show it here on the map, around here. Um, and uh, we, we have around 1,300 beds, uh, and um, so many of those are located on campus in two different housing areas. Uh, Shri, uh, I understand that you stayed with the KTH accommodation uh, for the, your first year, and that was you also got your first choice in Scrap Fun. Um, and now you have found housing on your own. Where do you stay now? Uh, so right now I'm staying in Kungsamra, which is closer to Lapis and the main campus. Uh, I found this accommodation through a, a student housing queue in Stockholm. And the area that I live in is, as I had mentioned, it is pretty close to all the amenities that is uh, that are needed for a student. So like shopping and restaurants, plus it's very close to nature and also to the university. So it's a win-win uh, accommodation for me. Perfect. That's great to hear. Um, okay, we'll look into what types of rooms there are. Um, so there are corridor rooms, which we will tell a little bit more about in a moment. There are single one-room apartments. We have the shared two or three bedroom apartments. Um, in those of the apartments where there is a kitchenette, and um, that is a small kitchen area. Um, the kitchenette includes an electric stovetop with two or three um, hot plates. There's a fridge. Um, there's a freezer compartment inside the small fridge. And uh, there's a sink, of course, in the kitchen. Uh, in, in the buildings, in all areas, there is no uh, reception desk or KTH staff. Uh, this is an independent way of living. You rent your uh, apartment and room, and then you will be able to contact us if you need assistance, like maintenance or anything, but you will care for the apartment on your own and you don't have staff in the building. If you want to know more about each location, then you can go to our website and there will be details specified there under the you can go directly to the headline locations okay do you want to go first and talk about the corridor room street yes uh, so as i had mentioned uh, kung samra is a corridor uh, accommodation so which is very similar to lapis that you're seeing right now uh, so each room has a private bathroom uh, attached with it and apart from that, uh, you have a kitchen uh, shared by uh, the number of people living in a corridor. Typically, uh, the maximum number of people living in a corridor can be 12. And for 12 people, you'll be uh, getting eight stub tops or eight individual hot plates and four fridges, four to, yeah, four, four to four fridges. So each fridge will be shared by three people. So each one will be having a freezer compartment and a general compartment and a space for your condiments. So this is the general arrangement of the fridge. And apart from this, uh, each one will be getting a dry cupboard to keep their uh, utilities. Yeah, uh, so yeah, this is the typical arrangement for a corridor room. And you will have utensils that are commonly used between people. So yeah, you can think before you buy stuff from home. And also the the living and uh, cleaning arrangements in a corridor room are typically 
uh, shared between the people so it is uh, each and every individual's responsibility to make sure that their corridor and kitchen is clean so it's a group effort and also corridor rooms generally have a lot of international people so you get to meet a lot of friends even before you go to your uni so it, it, it's it's pretty fun to live in a corridor room yeah that sounds great i know that it is often appreciated by the tenants yeah. who have contracts in the corridor rooms with us mm -hmm. um, and in the in the photo you see a, a text where it says lapsers Barriet. so this is the official name of the housing area but it's also called lapis as a short and the two words beneath are the names of the roads the actual address of inside the housing area <laughs> i realized that it's not that easy to translate um, so we also have the single one room apartments on the left side you see uh, an apartment in Björksatra. Björksatra is located in located in the southwest of Stockholm uh, it's uh, it's really close to the water and to the forest it's beautiful and here we offer the single one room apartment with a, a large larger bathroom and a kitchenette inside uh, on the right, there's Malvina's bag, photos from there. And same thing here, there's a private bathroom and a kitchenette that the single tenant use for themselves. We also have the shared two or three bedroom apartments. Uh, these are located inside the sneaking in housing area. So uh, as uh, Sheree was mentioning in the corridor living, it's, it's similar in this type of accommodation that you take shared responsibility for the common space like kitchen and bathroom and make sure that it's tidy and clean together by communicating um, yes so what's inside the rooms well uh, all the rooms are furnished and if, when you arrive there will be a bed a mattress table or desk a chair and also when you um, uh, arrive and pick up your key and contract you will receive a pillow and a blanket as a bedding kit we call it this is a gift from kth so that is one thing that you don't have to bring from home if you don't necessarily want a specific duvet or pillow um, what is not included is the linen the sheets, towels, and uh, kitchen utensils. But there is a chance that uh, the, some of the kitchen utensils or uh, tableware is left by the previous tenant. And if it's clean and whole, then we will let it be so that the next, like when you're coming, you can use it as well. But this is this differs between the apartments. Some of, some of the students wants to bring all their things. So some of them are empty. Uh, what did you bring from home, Shri, when you arrived to Sweden? Is there anything specific you should think about? Uh, so in my case, uh, like a pressure cooker is a necessity for me. Um, yeah, so I had to bring that from home. So if that is a necessity, please do bring and also bring all the uh, necessary spare items for them, well, like the weights and the whistles. Yeah, please do make sure you have them all ready because it's difficult to find here and also uh cutlery and tableware uh, plus other utensils like saucepans and stuff uh i came here and i checked what all i have in my i had in my previous uh, accommodation and then i chose to buy stuff from ikea or from second hand shops so that's how i manage my uh, utensils and cutlery situation yes great i can also mention that uh, in the swedish market for kitchen utensils there are pressure cookers and there are rice cookers, but they might not be the exact same brands that you would use mm -hmm. at home. So that's why uh, Shri mentioned the, the spare parts. If you would bring your own, then spare parts are good. But there are a lot on the market here as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, what should you consider before you apply? Well, you should think about if you prefer a shared or a single uh, housing or apartment 
and what part of the accommodation you are prepared to share. For example, if you stay in a corridor, you have your private bathroom, but you share a larger kitchen with others. If you uh, have a shared, if you choose a shared um, apartment, you will share both kitchen and, um, and the bathroom and be uh, helping each other out with uh, taking care of these areas. Um, as uh, Shri said, it, it's a lot of fun to have to live in a shared accommodation because you get to know people um, and it's an easy way to socialize it's an easy way to to make friends and and don't be alone in your housing uh, but this is differs uh, as a personal preference of course um, and in the application you will also have the opportunity to choose the starting date of the housing contract so you can choose either August 1st or August 16th and these two are the dates because we only start contracts on the first of the month and in the start of the semester you can also start the contract in the middle of the month um, but note that you will get your invoice from the contract start date you pay for the full contract period so that is from the start date of the contract to the end date of the contract uh, of course, you also need to consider your housing budget. The costs with KTH accommodation range from 4,600 to 7,500 crowns a uh, month per person. Um, there are uh, not that many in the higher range of pricing, but it's good to know that there are also a few larger single one-room apartments that range up to 7,500 crowns. And you can see the specific costs for each area, in each location, and each room type at KTH Accommodation website. And also, you will be able to see it in the application form, but inform yourself beforehand so that you know what you're looking at. Um, uh, and uh, um, I know that uh, Shri knows more about the external housing queue than I do, so please uh, let us know a little bit more about one of the larger ones yeah so as i had mentioned earlier once your uh, kth accommodation is over uh, an easier way for you to get accommodation is through uh, stockholm student bot status so it's a housing queue for students so the idea is that you join this online queue and for each day that you're present in the queue uh, you gain a, a, a single point for a point per day so the idea is that you gain more points and then they will put up listings for different housings, uh, housing places, or you have to uh, apply for them. And based on the number of points that you have, uh, the person with the highest point gets the housing. So some, so it's like a, a bidding process with your points that you have collected. So the, so the easier thing to do is before you arrive to Stockholm, you can register yourself in this place. So you don't need a personal number or a social security number to do that. So you can register yourself and you can start collecting uh, points. And uh, within the year uh, that you stay with KTH, you would have gained enough points to apply for an external housing uh, through SSB. So the important thing here is that uh, for you to continue collecting points in SSB, you need to be a member of the student union uh, in your university. So our student union is called uh, THS. So for you to become a member of this union, you should be you should have registered for a course at the university. So which is not possible uh, until and unless you come here and do all the process and you register yourself for the courses. So till then you can collect your days. So you can collect up to 90 days without student union uh, membership. Once you have collected 90 days, you can park them or you can pause the queue. And as soon as you receive your uh, student union membership, you can restart the queue. So you can plan accordingly and uh, do whatever feels good for you. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's it about a triple SB and about THS. Uh, it, is, uh, it, it is a big student union and the membership comes along with certain perks like you get discounts in various uh, uh, shops that are run by the student union, like the bookshops, the stationery shops, and even you, there is a restaurant run by the student union uh, within the campus. So you get a discount there. 
so and also you get to be a part of triple uh, sb through your student membership so these are the perks that you can avail through your membership and yeah that's it about ths yes and um i would love to hear more about your student uh, life in uh, stockholm and at kth and you have been here for a while now so that's almost yeah. two years um so please let us know a little bit more yeah so as soon as you come to stockholm you will be greeted by the members of the student union so the student volunteers will greet you and welcome you uh, so one of the parties that they throw is the kth welcome reception so it is for all the students those are starting their master program in the august, august. Uh, in this welcome reception, you'll meet a lot of new people. So it's like all the newcomers under one roof. So you meet a lot of new friends. And after that, uh, you have your official reception from KTH, which happens in uh, which in 2019 it happened in the Stockholm City Hall. And this is this hall is where the Nobel Banquet uh, is held every year. So it's pretty special. And on top of that, uh, you get to spend your first few weeks or the first two weeks uh, by participating in different activities that are organized by the student union so these activities involve uh, team building and getting to know the city better so you can be a part of them and these are the pictures that were clicked during such activities and during my uh, uh, first week or the second week in stockholm uh, i tried to visit a uh, uh, Gothenburg, uh, an amusement park in Gothenburg called Lisa Berry. So it was a pretty fun experience. And an interesting thing about Stockholm is that it has the longest art museum, so which is present in the underground in the tunnel barn or the metro station. So that picture can be seen over here. So it's pretty fun to watch all that while you make your commute. And at the left hand corner you can see a view from my apartment so this was my apartment through kth accommodation uh, it was pretty close to the city so the view is bustling with people and buildings so yeah that that was my experience with kth accommodation it was pretty fun lovely and do you have a do you have any favorite area of stockholm or uh, place um, yes. Yeah, I have two favorite areas actually. So one is the street that you can see in this picture, the left corner, the view from my apartment. So this street is always busy. So I try to get down a station before my actual station in the metro. And then I try to walk uh, along this road. It's a straight road and it's bustling with people and it has shops along both the ends. So it's pretty fun and entertaining to walk along that path. Uh, and then the second place is uh, the, scenery that is behind my house in my current accommodation uh, in kung samra so there is a tiny forest uh, at the back of the building so where you get to uh, hike around or walk around and after crossing the forest you have a nice palace a summer palace and uh, ulriksdal lake uh, it's 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 a big lake and yeah it's fun to spend an entire day out there uh, even it, it is fun even during winter and summer and both different looks and so it's pretty fun. Yes, uh, I, I hear that you appreciate both the city life and the nature around in Stockholm. And there are quite yeah. a lot of great places in Stockholm city and especially around the outskirts of the town. And you can easily mm -hmm. commute to those places, which I also appreciate as a, um, yeah, as living in Stockholm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we also have a few pictures from your uh, accommodation. So I'll just swap to that slide. So this is my current accommodation. So at the bottom, you can see the corridor room. So it's, you will be getting something like this when you opt for a corridor room. And in the top pictures, you can see the view from my window. So the left one is the view during the autumn season where it was all empty. The tree was completely empty during the autumn. And then uh, you switch to uh, summer, uh, I mean spring. It, it was pretty full and it was a beautiful sight. It was the same window. So, and at the, at the end, at the right end, you can see a view from my kitchen. So it's the common kitchen that we use. So yeah, you can see the rest all buildings of Kung Shamra. So yeah, that's it. Yes, lovely. Um, and we have different ways of connecting with us. 
do you want to mention a few? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, as Suzanne mentioned, you have a lot of ways to connect with us through different platforms. And apart from these platforms, we have uh, something called Student Ambassador Program, where you can contact with a student from your own program and you can ask your questions related to your program to them and they will be able to answer you. Uh, and on top of all this, you have uh, an email ID uh, that is the info at kth.se. So it is a very important email ID. So any questions that you have about uh, your uh, study at KTH, you can ask them. And uh, apart from that, you have a separate email for uh, accommodation, uh, accommodation at kth.se. So uh, you any accommodation related questions, you can ask them and it will be answered. Yeah, these are the different ways you can reach us and more, all your questions will be answered. Great. Great. Um, so you have probably heard this before if you have watched one of the previous webinars from KTH, but the official arrival date this year is August 2nd and August 22nd. Uh, if you arrive on these days, you will be able to uh, use the airport shuttle directly from uh, the airport to KTH main campus where you pick up your keys and contract to your accommodation if you are renting with KTH accommodation. Um, you will also be able to uh, come a little bit later in the day than uh, any usual weekday because the KTH entree building is open I think from uh, 9 in the morning until um, 22 in the evening and uh, the you can you can double check the opening hours on our website just to make sure at new at KTH um, website. Uh, for updated information about the arrival days, please check out the webinar on the June 10th. Uh, you actually arrived in the arrival days 2019, and of course it was a little bit different then from this year with the pandemic. But do you want to give your view of it as well and the services that was available? Yeah, uh, sure. So I unfortunately I couldn't make it on the arrival days, so I came a day later than the official ones. So uh, as soon as I reached the Orlando airport, I took a bus to the Stockholm city to KTH. And uh, as soon as you enter KTH, you will be greeted at the entree first. So you enter the entree and you get uh, all your necessities like your housing contract, your keys, and you get to activate your IT account and also you get your bedding that is the gift from kth so with all these you are set to go uh, to your uh, respective accommodation and along this way you will be meeting a lot of uh, students and uh, volunteers from ths so you can ask all your questions to them and you can interact with them and it's an easy way to make friends as soon as you arrive in stockholm so that uh, your it's mainly to make you feel welcome to the city and if you choose to come on the arrival day, uh, you'll be greeted by the student volunteers right from the Orlando airport. So it's a pretty fun experience. You can see a lot of photos going up as soon as uh, students start arriving. Uh, so yeah, it is uh, advisable and it is pretty fun to come during the arrival day because you have transportation arranged by KTH. So you can make use of that and you will have student volunteers guiding you through that process. That's great. Um well have a little quick summary before we go into some of the questions um so the application period is in may and the deadline is may 31st um you will need to fulfill the requirements before you fill in your uh, housing application and that is that you should have received your acceptance letter on a university admission page and you should have paid your you should have paid your tuition fees and please think twice before you complete your application. Uh, you can see all the housing options on our webpage and in the application form. And uh, the application form, the link to the application form is posted on our website on May 1st. And you will receive an email with um, the link to the um, form as well and instructions. Uh, we recommend you to have a look at the website uh, already now if you want and uh, specifically under the section staying with us so that you can inform yourself what it is like what to expect um, 
and uh, moving in, moving out, all this information. So the arrival days are on August 2nd and August 22nd, and we recommend you arrive on those days because uh, it will be uh, a fun start to your semester at KTH or your year at KTH. Um, we have tried to cover most of the questions that have come in uh, from you guys. Um, so we hope that you feel like you have found your answers in this presentation. Uh, but we would like to just um, continue with a few of those that weren't quite met. Um, so I'll start with asking you, Shri, uh, what services that will be provided along with the place of accommodation? Uh, so usually through your rent through KTH accommodation covers your electricity, water, heat and internet in most locations. So in the presentation, we had mentioned that Technicare Indian doesn't have internet through KTH. Uh, but still, KTH accommodation will help you or guide you in arranging the service. And as we had mentioned earlier, uh, there are no service desk from KTH or uh, yeah, KTH to help you with your cleaning service or bedding service or any other service. So it is the tenants or the individual's responsibility to take care of the place that you're living in. Uh, yeah make sure that your stay is comfortable so it is in your hands yes um what have other students identified as costs and benefits of living in student housing versus not with the student housing or kdh uh, so according to me the benefits are that uh, the first and main benefit is that you're new to the city so and you're new to an entire country so it's easier to find an accommodation through kth accommodation rather than trying to find it on your own uh, people find it difficult i found it difficult uh, so it is easier plus uh, the entire rent covers electricity heat water and internet so we need not worry about uh, paying multiple bills so everything is taken care of under one single bill and most of the accommodation or the places are located uh, close to the campuses or in and around the campuses so it is easier for students to commute to commute to the campus uh, yeah it is easier rather than finding an accommodation anywhere else without knowing the locality it's better to go through kth accommodation so that you get to live uh, reasonably close to the campus yes that's great great answers um so yeah uh susan so i have few questions for you if, yeah i can start uh so if i move into the room on august 22nd do i still need to pay rent for the whole month of august uh, yes you have to pay rent for the full period that is stated on your contract so make sure to read the contract when you receive it together with the housing offer um and um so the rent starts the rent starts from the contract start date basically even if you arrive a week later or two weeks later and uh, that is the rule so it mm -hmm. continues through the two until the end date okay uh, so uh, i have another question over here i am a kth scholarship holder i want to know about the charges of kth hostel accommodation is there any relief in hostel charges for KTH scholarship holders? And there are no discounts on the rent uh, if you're a scholarship holder. Okay, uh, so the next one would be, if I join KTH accommodation, what is the minimum contract period? If I found another place to live, can I terminate the contract? So the minimum contract period is two months. If you want to make changes to the contract, you need to give two months notice and you can find a contract um, cancellation form on our web page. And it's clearly, um, it's clearly stated with the deadlines for canceling your contract and so on. And it is very common that if you would find another accommodation that you would need to pay a double, um, a double rent for a month, sometimes two because it's really hard to match um, the new contract with the previous one. 
yeah okay. thank you and the last question is that uh, what if i need to bring a spouse or a family member uh, how does kth accommodation help with that so kth accommodation mainly have rooms and apartments for students coming by themselves so there's a, a very limited number of uh, housing options for uh, people bringing their students bringing their partners or spouse or bringing their families um, but you will have the opportunity to mention this in your application if you do plan or will need to bring your partner or family but there is no guarantee that we can offer housing for your full family the housing guarantee is for the, um, the accepted student only Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for answering all the questions. Thank you. Uh, so now we will have a slide where we explain the chat. Um, there is a little pink symbol in the bottom of the page here. Um, you will find it on the web page called new at KTH or at the web page called new uh, kth.se slash accommodation. And you just click the chat with us and then you're live on the chat and can ask us questions. And that's where we're gonna be after this presentation. Oops, there we go. So uh, these are the, yeah. So these are the upcoming webinars and it is really important that you take part in them so that you don't miss out on any information that is relevant for your uh, further studies here at KDH and yeah make sure you take part in them and you can ask as many questions that you want yes uh, so it's an easier way for you to get yourself updated yeah that's very good okay uh, thank you so much for listening to this presentation and uh, yeah see you at kth